Pipelines decorators. They don't make your Azure pipelines prettier, but they're pretty useful anyway. Let's explore them together, shall we? Hello everyone and welcome back to Coder Day. Today's topic is fairly advanced, but I think it's pretty interesting. Take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it yet, so you will not miss out on any other video like this. I think we all know Azure Pipelines, the service into Azure DevOps that allows you to build, test, and deploy your applications, and that works with basically any code and any framework. We can categorize the pipelines in two main categories, the build pipelines, or CI ones, and the release pipelines, or CD ones. And we have to remember they come in two different flavors. We have the classic pipelines, which are basically created and managed using the visual interface, and the YAML pipelines, or the proper name would be multi-stage pipelines, which as the names say, you can create and manage using YAML files in your repository. This distinction will be important in a moment. Working with pipelines is easy. You just create a job, and add tasks to it for all the operations you want to perform. For example, you want to build your Java application, add the build task. You want to test your .NET Core project, add the .NET test task. You want to scan your code for vulnerabilities? Well, just add one of the first or third party tasks to map to some security scanning tools. You want to deploy your microservices to Kubernetes? Well, just add the deployment task and so on and so forth. I could continue because there are literally thousands of tasks. But what if you want all your pipelines to execute some task without anyone being able to disable or skip them? Well, pipelines decorators are the answer. In fact, decorators allow for adding some task to the beginning or at the end of any job, or actually even both. And this is different from adding a task to a specific pipeline or definition because decorators automatically apply to the whole organization, meaning that tasks are injected in all the pipelines in your organization that respect some specific conditions. Since there are two main kinds of pipelines, as we've seen before, there are also two main kinds of pipelines decorators, the build decorators and the release decorators. Build decorators apply to the classic build pipelines and to the newer YAML multi-stage pipelines, while the release decorators apply only to the classic release pipelines. Easy, right? But wait a minute. YAML pipelines can be used for deployments as well. So how does this work? Well, actually, when you create the build decorator, it will apply to the whole YAML pipeline, whether it has jobs or deployment jobs. I know this is a little confusing, but the reason for this is that the YAML pipelines derive from the classic build pipelines. And that means that they share the same extensibility points. For this reason, when you create, again, a build uh, decorator, it will apply to also the deployment jobs. And of course, you can control that with some conditionals, as you will see in a moment. Another thing you need to decide when creating a decorator is when you want your task to be injected. As I mentioned before, they can be injected at the beginning of the job, before any other task, or at the end of the job, basically after any other task, or actually even both before and after. It's completely up to you. So how can we create pipelines decorators? They basically depends on two main files. The first one is a YAML file, uh, which contains all your tasks that you want to inject into your pipelines. And it's basically a normal template file from the YAML pipelines. The other files is a JSON file, which contains the manifest of your um, decorator and tells the Azure DevOps pipelines how to execute and when to execute them. Decorators use the normal Azure DevOps extensibility points, which means you have to package them into extensions. After that, you need to upload the extension into the marketplace and share them with your organization. Remember that only private extensions can contain decorators. After that, 
you need to install these extensions in your Azure DevOps organization. And when it's completed, your task will be automatically injected into your pipelines. I'm going to show you all of these right now. And you can also find the official documentation links in the video description below. I've created a GitHub repo for all the code and examples I'm going through today. So you can also go there and take a look. Again, you can find the link to the repo in the video description. Okay, let's jump into the code, shall we? This is the GitHub repo I created for showing how decorators work. I have some basic examples here, as well as more advanced ones. The basic are in the root and the advanced, of course, in the advanced folder. As I mentioned before, we have the build decorators and the release decorators. And for each one of those, we have the pre, post and pre post decorators. Of course, as you can imagine, the pre ones injects at the beginning of the pipeline where the post ones at the end. Let's open one of those and see its structure. As you can see, we have the YAML file here where we define the task to be injected and the JSON file here that contains the manifest of the decorator. We also have the package JSON and the package lock JSON, because as I've mentioned, we need to package the decorator into an Azure DevOps extension, and that relies on some Node.js components. So let's see those files more in depth. This is one of the JSON files with the manifest. It is basically a standard Azure DevOps extension manifest, but the main part is these contributions here in the middle, which contains what is probably the most important part of the whole document, the targets. In this case, it's a Azure Pipelines agent job, which means it's a build decorator, and it will execute pre job, which means that it will inject all these tasks at the beginning of the pipeline job. If we go to the next one, we'll see that this is in fact a release decorator. And again, it's a pre job, but we also have here again, a release one that has both the pre and the post switcher, which means that this one will run on both before any other task in the job and also after any other task in the job. Of course, you can also have just a post job with just this one. And talking about the YAML file, this is just one of those. As you can see, it's basically a fairly standard YAML template for Azure Pipelines, in which you just define the steps and the tasks you want your decorator to inject. In this case, this YAML file belong to the pre here inside the build. So this YAML file will be executed in a build context before any other task. The YAML file structure doesn't change if it's pre or post or pre post. So we can see here in the YAML file of the post job, the YAML is exactly the same. Let's try these out. First of all, what we need to do, as I mentioned before, is to package this in an extension. And to do so, we may need to change something in the VSS extension JSON file. Specifically, we need to change here the publisher. This needs to match your publisher that you registered in the marketplace. In my case, it's just DB, so I'm just going to put here DB. After this, we need to go to the command line in the folder containing our extension, as you can see here, and execute this command, tfx extensions create. This command is part of the TFS cross-platform command line, which is one of the packages you need to install as a prerequisite. And what it does is reading the vss-extension JSON file, and create your extension with the metadata containing in there. If we go back to Visual Studio Code, what we see is apart from the targets, we also specify the YAML file that is composing our decorator. So when I run the TFX extension create, the tool will scan this metadata and grab all and only the files that are contained in this manifest. Let's go back. And we see that here now we have our extension, right? Once we have the file, we can go to the marketplace. Here it is, the Visual Studio Marketplace, and click on Publish Extensions. As you can see, I already have some extension published, but I want to publish a new one. So 
Just click on the new extension, select Azure DevOps, click here, and upload the file we are creating now. In this case, it's the Postman. If I open this, I can then upload it. And this will go through some verification. While it's doing so, we can go ahead and share with my organization, which is this DB Tech. All right, now this extension has been shared with my organization, as you can see here. And again, I want to point out that this needs to be private. If you make this extension public, you will not be able to use the decorators. Once we have shared our extension with the organization, we need to go in organization settings in Azure DevOps, extensions, and then shared. In here, you'll see that I have my extension that I just shared, which I can then install. So if I click on here, I have the install button on the upper right. Let's go ahead and click on it. This is loading my organization. Here it is, dbtech. I can click on install and it's all done. The extension with the decorator has been installed in my organization. So now I can actually use it. I've created this small sample project to show you how decorators work. If we go to pipelines, we can see that I have three different pipelines. I have a classic build pipeline. I have a YAML pipeline that does only build. And then I have another YAML pipeline that does both build and deploy. Let's start with the classic one. Let's go to edit. And I want to show you that here I only have two tasks. There are two simple command line tasks that just print out this is step one and this is step two. So nothing impressive here. Let's try to run this. Pipeline starting. And of course, it executes pretty fast because basically it does nothing. But what is interesting is that I have, again, the task one and task two we just seen. But here we have this task that was not present in the pipeline definition, which is actually injected by the decorator. In fact, I can see that this is from the decorator. And if you remember from the pipeline decorator definition we were watching before, this is the message in that YAML file. So again, we can go back to pipelines and take a look at the YAML bit pipeline. Same thing. I have only two steps. Again, same thing as before, task one that prints out this is step one and task two printing out this is step two. Let's run this as well. And the result is the same. Task one, this is step one, task two, this is step two, and the decorator inject, injected task saying that is from the decorator. Now this is as expected because as I was mentioning before, the build decorators affect both classic build and YAML pipeline. Let's see what happens with a pipeline that contains both build and deploy definitions. And we have it here. If we take a look at this, it's a little bit more complex than before. We have the CI job or the build job as before with the task one and task two. But we also have two other stages. We have a stage one, which is actually containing a deployment job. And we also have stage two with again, contain another deployment job. Let's try to run this and see what happened. Run, run. We see here the difference. We have the different stages, right? We have stage one, stage two, and stage three. And let's take a look at the log. As expected, in the normal job, we have task one, task two, and the decorator injected one. But what is interesting is looking at what happened inside the deployment job. And again, there is the decorator injected task here as well. And same will be for the stage number two with the decorator injected task. So what if I want to inject some task in a normal job, but not in a deployment job or vice versa? Let's see how to do that. I'm back in VS Code now, and this time in the advanced folder. And I have two different decorators I want to show you. This one checks that the branch name from which you're building up your source code must be master when you try to deploy to production. Because it's a part of a deployment, we want to inject this only inside a deployment job. 
We don't want to do that in a build process. The way to do that is the conditional on top of here. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, there is no out of the box variable or flag to let you know this is a deployment job or it's a normal job. So you need to come up with something like this. In my case, what I do is checking if the environment ID has a value or not. And this is because you cannot have a deployment job without environment. Even if you have one without it, it will automatically create one for you. Which means that if I'm running into a deployment job, for sure the environment.id variable will have a value. Vice versa, this will never have a value if this is a normal build job. If you look up here, this is the full conditional. And if it looks familiar to you, it's because this is the same kind of conditional you can use, for example, in the templates. Just for complete the description, since I said what this task will do, this is a PowerShell script. And I checked that the stage name is production or contain something like production. And of course, I also check here the branch name where we come from. This is a fairly simple conditional, but let me show you something different. This decorator here perform exactly the same job, but using just conditionals. In fact, you'll see here that apart from checking the environment ID to make sure I'm running in a deployment job, I also have in the conditional the branch name and stage name variable. All of those are wrapped into end. So only when all these conditions are true, then this will execute. And in this case, it will break the deployment causing this error. So this is how you apply conditions in your pipelines decorators. And we can see this in action here. This is again a multi-stage YAML pipeline in which I have a build stage and two deployment stages. If we go into the logs, we can see that I execute this from a test branch, not from master. And in fact, I have here the branch name checker that is injected by the decorator, which is the one we've just seen, which prints out, okay, this is the stage name, the branch name is test branch, so everything is good. But when I go to production, since the stage name is production and the branch name is test branch, I cannot continue. In fact, the error is the source branch is test branch instead of master, you cannot deploy to production. And in fact, the pipeline exit with error number one. So I'm prevented to deploy to production from a branch that is not master. This was a quite comprehensive tour of Azure Pipelines decorators. Anything more you wanna know about them? Let me know in the comment section below. And once again, be sure to check out my GitHub repo with all the examples, and you can find the link in the description of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me today, and see you soon at Quarter Dave.